Hello everyone and welcome to Evermind. My name is Celeste Noel. Thank you for joining me today. Our next guest is someone I found on an app called Playbook. And I found it when I found him when COVID first hit the States. And I got really sick really fast of the same workouts. To be fair, I'd been sick before in the gym, just doing the same, picking up the same weight, putting back down the same weight, or increasing the weight and then putting it back down. Same squats 50 times, you know, same you know, bicep curls, whatever it was, it all felt very much the same. And that just is not something that works for me. I need a dynamic workout. I need to think. It's why I love, I love rock climbing because my brain has to put together how I'm going to get up this path. I love mountain biking because my brain has to think how I'm going to do this. I have to get my mind body connected. And that is what, why I love sports. It's why I love dynamic workouts. So I got really sick really fast of all these same workouts. And I finally typed in the search, um, I typed in primal and that's it. Just, I needed some sort of primal dynamic workout. That's what I needed. And Kellen Malad came up and I am so utterly grateful for that moment because it has changed my whole life. Kellen is an incredible human being and his workouts are exactly, exactly what I needed. It's sort of like I've now seen the light in a whole new way and I will never be able to go back to an, to an old traditional workout ever. So Kellen Malad, he is, he's a coach and he's a, he's a fitness specialist, movement specialist, if you will. He's been in the fitness industry for over 10 years, supporting people's development and fitness. He has a psychology background, which I think is really incredible. And one of the reasons he is so mindful in his practice, and you can see it both if you go to his social media, which will all be below, or if you, if you get on Playbook and you start taking his courses, you can, in every video, it's just, it's so mindful. There's so much thought and awareness that goes into each, each little video and then each workout as a whole. It's incredible. So he's absolutely bringing back or bringing to the fitness industry um, a sense of creativity. I think he's bringing, bringing the creativity back to movement. He's making it more holistic, more expressive, more mindful. And I think that that's a huge, huge, big deal. It's another reason why my last interview, um, you'll see up above, I interviewed Austin Einhorn. And I think Austin is doing something very similar in a different way. They're both catalysts for this fitness industry, this old paradigm, if you will, of where we've been, what we think, how we think we have to move our bodies, which is very limited and has very little creativity. So in this video, you'll see Kellen speaking, I'll be interviewing, and as well, Travis Ortmeyer. So before we get to it, remember to hit that subscribe button and like this video, please share it, it would help us out. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Please enjoy. Hi. I really love, I mean, when I've done your workouts and just listening to the different workouts, I love that every time there's a break, um, how you always have us, whenever there's a break, we're, think, we're either thinking about something or, or, or being present kind of thing, where either there's like, you know, active recovery like you have. And I've just, in my experience, um, it's, there's very rare, it's very rare that I see or experience somebody doing that. Um, I notice how often it's, you can tell that the mental piece, you make it just as important as the physical piece in, in each and every, every workout, which I think is really pretty awesome personally. Um, the reminder to breathe, conscious breathing, those kind of things is really pretty cool. Um, yeah, I try, to, I try to bring those cues back to mindfulness as much as possible because that's yeah. that's kind of the 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 connecting thread that runs through all of this. Like right. if you could be mindful of what's going on in your body, be mindful of what's going on in your head, be mindful of what's going on around you, then a lot of that really drives the change process. Totally, and it's so easy to forget too. I mean, almost every time. I mean. You got to figure however many times a person moves. Let's say, you know, if I do three times a week, 
almost every time I'll still forget to be mindful when my, when my body has just gone through a high amount of stress until somebody reminds me like, Oh, all right. I got to breathe, mm. breathe a little better. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Everything's good here. Well, let's take a step back for a second. What, what are your styles of fitness? What is it you like to bring to the table as far as uh, the physical side of what it is, maybe for the people who aren't familiar with what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have been a, uh, a long time lover of movement. So I really try to embrace all the experiences that I've had in my life. So I grew up playing a, a, a variety of different sports. I wasn't great. At, at, at any of them, but I was, I was pretty good across the board. So, you know, I just really valued kind of having this uh, very broad skill set. Uh, I was also overweight as a kid. So I found fitness when I was maybe like 13 or 14. And, you know, I, I uh, you know, started running and lifting weights and, you know, I lost maybe like 30 pounds and that completely uh, just gave me a renewed sense of of confidence, and um, so that was a big, big kind of turning point in my development. And so I continued to to train and started out with like a bodybuilder type approach, and then it got into um, you know what I call the my men's health fitness phase, or it was like functional training. And when I got into the industry, that was kind of dominating um, how how trainers were being taught. And uh, through that, that kind of led me to kettlebells and CrossFit and some of these underground methods. And eventually, as I've always been very curious and looking around for what's relevant and how do I connect these dots, uh, that led me to this world of natural movement. Uh, I started, I got exposed to a fitness system called MoveNat, and uh, the company was pretty young at the time. This was back in, in 2011, 2012. And um, I, I ended up with a, a role on that team teaching some of their workshops and certifications. And it was in that process of, uh, of learning natural movement and um, you know, just looking beyond disciplines and just like, what is the human body? How is the human body designed to move? And how can we start to help people get back to that? Uh, I really... I was, I was teaching that. So I really fell down the rabbit hole and that opened me up to, um, you know, beyond fitness and exercise to a more, a wider look at, at movement. So, uh, that's kind of where I've been for the past seven or eight years. And it's been a, a pretty cool place because all of a sudden it's not confined to the, the traditional ways that we think about of fitness and exercise, but looking more at, um, movement in its entirety and how it how it uh, supports your mental and emotional health how it uh, contributes to just your physical ability and capability on a on a lifestyle or day-to-day -day basis so there's a lot of cool angles there that I like to take nice so one of the things I've noticed is uh, a lot of your moves look like Capoeira. I don't know if you ever studied that or if you know what that is. It's a form of martial arts. It's, uh, I think, Brazilian. Um, really cool, fluid movements that a 300-pound guy like myself has a really fucking hard time with. Those workouts kick my ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is hard, but, uh, you know, I love the style of it. I love the way, the, I guess, more the creativity behind all the stuff that you do because you're not just – you know, push, pull, up, down, up, down, the same old crap that every other routine's got. And I mean, for me, I'm, I'm a strong man. So what we do is a little bit different, at least. We pick things up, carry them distances, have to move at different angles. But it's still not as all-encompassing as what you do is. And I got to admit, you know, one, yes, it, it kicked my ass. Two, I really liked finding all the weaknesses in my game finding that you know i'm stiff moving this way I'm, I'm better going that way my balance is better the balance is weaker it really pokes holes in what i thought was you know an overall strong physique and you know for for somebody who trains for strength purely i think it's a great way of finding any weak spots and so that i mean i've got to say this it's a kick-ass workout and it's uh it's something i'm going to keep in my routine for sure yeah, that's awesome. 
Um, there's, there's a few pieces in there. I, I feel like every human is innately creative. I also feel like uh, the societal messages that we get kind of restricts creativity or it's like something reserved for, for artists or people who like specifically identify as, as artists. But I think that that resides within all of us. And I, you know, part of this work is just opening up some space for people to move more creatively. And, you know, it's not meant to have a, um, it doesn't, it doesn't have to look the same for everybody. It's just getting in and like you said, it's going to illuminate where you are at. It's gonna illuminate some imbalances, but we've all got that. Uh, I think oftentimes we get the message that it's not, like we try to hide our weaknesses or cover them up or um, uh, we don't wanna show that level of vulnerability, but Absolutely. really what's, yeah. It, it, for the sake of growth, you know, you can only, you can only grow if you embrace what those weaknesses are and understand that everybody's got them. And this is all a, a path towards getting better. And, um, you know, I, I, I hope that my work is, is versatile enough to apply to everybody, whether you're driven by sports or you're driven to just kind of live a healthy lifestyle or, uh, you've got fitness goals or not like it doesn't matter it, it, yeah. it just fits in so um like i said i borrowed from a bunch of different places i've never done capoeira but i have that stuff is floating around the movement community so of course i've been influenced by it i definitely try to send the message that it's not so much about the discipline that that these disciplines don't have a monopoly on these movements mm -hmm. that the idea of natural movements it, natural movement is that it, the human body, the human beings evolved to move in various ways. Um, technically, anything your body can do is natural. Um, but if we look at it from an ev evolutionary standpoint, let's start with what's most practical for us. Um, and then we can build on these different layers of specialization and artistry from there. So really, this stuff is just, it, it, it has no one home. It's it's up to the individual to tailor it to their unique style. And I think that's where this piece of creativity really, really gets sparked. So that kind of, that might be the answer to this question, but um, Kellen, what is, so why is it important for people to move in the way that you teach? Hmm. Um, I think it's important to have options behind, beyond what's presented to us in the mainstream of fitness. If you go to a, a typical gym or, or you look at the landscape of, of exercise-based fitness, it's like everybody, it, it, it's, it feels very mechanical to me. And you know, I have a saying, it, it's show the world who you are through how you move. I want to bring more style and personality to help people bring more of that into their movements um, because there's a lot to learn there as an individual. Uh, there's also, um, it, it's just cool to be able to, to, to share that. Um, where exercise becomes very much confined by the box, uh, I want people to, to feel free to be able to explore because you never know what you're going to learn about yourself. Um, you're, it's so easy for us to get locked into identifying in certain ways or, or with the roles that we play, but every individual is so, so complex and so layered. So to move in these ways is really to open yourself up and to be able to, in my, in my view, experience your full spectrum of humanity. So I know we're kind of getting really deep into this. I, know, I'm all for it. I love that. That's, quickly, the way I really, that's, I, that's I, why it's important. Like it's, I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, this is, you know, it's, it's so much more than the movement. So when, if, if, if I put it out there and if it resonates or it catches someone's eye, then great. Maybe we can take it deeper. Um, and I, I try to be as accessible as possible that way without saying, without tying it so much to the exact movement. I think there's a lot of benefits behind moving naturally, but I think what you find on an individual level is, is, is that's kind of my focal point. Yeah, it's been really, um, just by doing the workouts in the way you teach, 
I mean, it's very, my, my reason for wanting to move in the ways you teach is um, very similar to what you said. I, I learn a lot about myself on a few levels when I do a workout. One, because I, I notice I don't have to do it the way that everybody else is doing it. And I love that you provide that creativity. So it's like, oh, I don't have to do a crawl only one way. Like there's eight different ways I could try this out right now or whatever it is. Um, and I really appreciate it. even the squats, right? The squats aren't always the same up and down. It's doing at different angles and moving your body and everything else. And I notice I'll learn more kind of like what he was saying about uh, if there's a weakness or if there's, oh, that feels a little weird. I did not even know that was there until yeah. just now. And I'm like, now I'll just take note and see how it goes as we go. But I really enjoy, and, and he and I are in some ways total opposites. He can obviously, you know, he's been doing strongman since he was, what, 19? And you've been training, you, okay, so you've been training since you were 11. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So I, I was a fat kid too. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I enjoy, I played sports growing up, you know, soccer and softball and everything else. What I loved about the sports is that, you know, in a game or practice, you're not, there's, there's practice of doing the same thing over and over, but in the games you can have variety, right? There's, that was my play. And I miss that sometimes. He can do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And like, he loves it. I have got to have variety. I have to have variety. I will lose my shit if I don't get variety. And so I really have appreciated yours because I get to do that. Like, cool, I get to have the play. I get to experiment. I get to whatever. And I can have the routine of doing a similar workout over and over again but still mix it up and still learn every single time for me. Does that yeah, make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So really you, you get all these, every time you move, it, it's a chance to learn something new about your body. Um, I mean, just on a physical level by exploring these movements, the different ways, if you're always doing everything the same way, staying in that same pathway every single time, then um, it, you eventually kind of fall into autopilot. But um, anytime you start to change the complexity or the intensity behind your training, it gives you an opportunity to feel your body a different way, learn new things about your body. And I think what's helpful about this in the big picture is just being able to adapt. So life is all about adaptability. I, what, what better context for that than this year? Like, Life is constantly, we're going to make plans and yeah. life is going to constantly be throwing curveballs at us and you have to be able to adapt in the moment. So if you don't practice being adaptable, then you're practicing being rigid. So um, you know, I think that that's a big part of adding these, these layers of diversity, but also finding that balance between stay consistent, stay intentional and uh, be able to, to see uh, see your growth and and dedicate yourself to whatever it is that you whatever stokes you up and that you love but also mix it up and understand that there's there's different ways to to do it totally I totally agree okay so because I've started I want to get a little bit deep if you're okay with that a little more maybe than we already have sure. um I, I wanted to ask what your personal philosophy is if you have one if you know it I essentially what you stand for. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up, I've been taking a course. Are you familiar with Michael Gervais? No. No. So he's a, a sports psychologist for the Seahawks. Okay. And he has a great podcast called Finding Mastery. I highly recommend it. Um, and he also does this course called Compete to Create that I'm in the middle of. And I've been really loving so far. I've been getting have, all these same questions. I know he has. <laughs> I'm asking everybody right now because I love it. So he has this, your personal philosophy, what you stand for in life. Um, and I've been curious as I go, the reason I'm asking it so much is because these people that I'm either learning about um, or I really respect or I just want to know more of who they are, um, especially in light of 2020, <laughs> all the things in 2020, I think now more than ever is probably so important, is so important to come up with who we are 
because I think if you don't know who you are or what you stand for in life, things that are happening in 2020 are very, very difficult. They become very extremely difficult because you're just kind of blown in the wind and you don't have any real direction. You know what I mean? So out of curiosity, do you have some like who you are, what you stand for kind of thing? Um, I, I, I speak a lot about the importance of, of aligning, um, aligning with your values. So if I had a philosophy, I guess, um, you know, uh, uh, another saying, uh, that, uh, that really guides me is that, um, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but, but how we do one thing is how we do everything. Yeah. Um, and that really is very, that really resonates with me. Um, because I think with all the things that we do and all the different roles that we play in life, um, that the, again, the common thread it becomes our values. So having a, being able to reflect on what your personal values are. And, uh, you know, for me, that's, uh, you know, like joy and play and creativity, uh, curiosity and self-awareness empathy you know these things are are my 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 internal values that serve as my my compass through life cool. um the the landscape around me changes but if i can stay rooted in those values um then then i'm i'm, I'm good then i'm i'm grounded within myself and that's that's all well and good but how do you actually practice that so for me movement is is really about practicing my values and uh, being able to, um, I guess, embody that philosophy. So every time that I'm practicing movement and uh, the things that I share on YouTube and things like that, that's a, a small slice of what I do. Um, uh, it's what I share. Um, but in all the different ways that I like to train, it's all about, well, how can I integrate my personal values into how I'm approaching this. Totally. That makes sense to me. Do you, where do you think you learned some of those values? Is that something you, you grew up with or did you find other people as you, as you grew and went, I really like this and I really like that kind of gathered them together. Was it always there? What, where did that come from? Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot comes, a lot of our values come back uh, to our, our, our formative years, our childhood story. Um, so I think that was kind of where the foundation started to get, get laid. Um, I, for the most part, it was, it was just me and my mom when I was growing up. And, um, and so I got a lot of my values from her. At the same time, um, I being an only child, I had so much space. I had so much time to myself to, to process this stuff, to think about it. I wasn't constantly, I didn't constantly have people around me and I didn't, I had, a, so I had a lot of, um, I just didn't constantly have this input. Um, I got a lot of, of my values from my mom and, and my dad too, he placed, you know, was definitely, um, you know, came into more of a central part of my life later on. Um, but not having brothers or sisters, not having a, being kind of an introverted person and not having a massive, uh, social network that, that just gave me a lot of space. And, a, and I had a lot of this time to figure this stuff out on my, on my own terms, take a concept and just sit with it and figure out how it, uh, what it looks like for me in, in different ways. Yeah. So I think um, that was kind of the foundation. And then um, when I went to college, um, it, it was, I, I really approached my education in terms of, of just pursuing the things that I was interested in. So it was like psychology, African-American studies, um, and a little bit of the sciences in there too, but I was really like, I wasn't on this track to, to, uh, um, with, with this end game in mind, it was like, I have this opportunity now within higher education to, um, to explore and to, to keep learning and keep soaking things up. So along that process, I, I, 
I, I gained more knowledge, which helped me be more, even more intentional or more focused with how I was, I was creating my value system. Yeah. I love that. Do you have some questions? Thank you, Darren. <coughs> Go ahead. Um, okay. Well, there's when you're on your roll of questions, I'll just. I mean, you can interrupt. I'll questions. just yeah, I'll just go otherwise. <laughs> um, okay, so some I would I also oh, there's so many questions I do want to ask. Um, do you think, <laughs> in terms of mo the movement you teach, okay, and the philosophy you teach and whatnot within your movement, um, because a big part of um, some of what I help people with on the mental aspect would be chronic pain, right? Because I, I, I had chronic pain for a really long time in my life. Um, do you think that moving in the way that you're talking about can help people with chronic pain um, due to injuries or whatever? Can it really help them in life? Uh, I do. And I've, I've, uh, um, one of the one of the draws for me into this was um, was 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 pain in a sense um, pain and fatigue through my twenties I was I always say like I only had one 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 training gear and that was like I was training like a go hard crazy person every workout was like going to war it was do or die um, and and you know I think I. To, to be honest, I think I picked some of that up from just this kind of a relic from when I was overweight and unconfident. I was just like, fuck, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going back. I'm not going to be that person again. So I'm going to, I'm going to work harder and I'm going to wage war on my body and make it what I want it to be. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but eventually, you know, I'm, I'm in my, you know, mid twenties or so. And I'm starting to notice like, damn, I'm just like, I'm, I'm achy. I'm, I, and I'm, I'm kind of stressed about this. It's like having like focusing so intently on, on all things related to my diet and my training and just being on all the time with it as just, um, there was a lot of pain associated yeah. with that physically and, uh, but more like mentally and emotionally. Yeah. So that, the, that, um, that just, you know, caused me to pause and say like, well, what, like, can I do something differently? And I started, started looking around. And um, as I got into natural movement or um, I started playing in my workouts more, and then I became aware of this thing called natural movement. And within that, there was this whole side of training that wasn't just about performing and achieving things. It was about this other side of my training, which was about taking care of myself. And I didn't know that that's what I was looking for. Um, it made sense coming from my background in psychology and in counseling um, and how important self-care is, but I never connected those dots. I thought fitness always had to be like, it always had to be just hammering away. And so um, looking at movement from that balanced perspective of, of, okay, there's part of my training that is about creating, placing stress on my body so it can adapt and grow stronger. But there's a whole, like, uh, that, that's, there, I, there's only so much of that I can do. And the older I get, that, that balance changes. I need more recovery time. What do I do in that recovery time? How can I keep growing? It is, is recovery a passive process where I'm just doing nothing. And I'm like, I'm not cool with that. Like, I want to keep learning. I want to keep moving. But um, I, I had to start thinking about making space for restoring my body through stretching, through gentle movements, through just being more mindful and being more, just being more present in my body and the messages that, that I'm getting from my body, learning to speak that language with, with greater fluency. So I think therein lies the the value for people who are especially in pain. What I've found working with people is that there's this overarching um, uh, holistic approach, if you will. It runs so contrary to how we're taught to see fitness that people just have a hard time wrapping their head around it because we're on this cycle of of doing things and achieving things and, and pursuing our goals at all costs at all times. 
but inevitably we come to life happens and it forces us to slow down, whether it be an injury or some kind of life change. Uh, life will give us these moments where we have an opportunity to pause and, um, and re reflect on what it means to, to take care of ourselves or we're, we're put in a position where we need to heal. So, um, you know, what I've seen over the years working with people is that that usually happens. It's usually an injury. Um, sometimes it's something, some other spark, but um, people will be in pain and they're just like, I, I know I need to do something different. Can you, can you show me some of that stuff? And that's where, that's where it begins. Um, and I, I try not to treat it as such a, um, uh, an exact science, but, but again, coming from my background as a, a, my training as a therapist, it's more about guiding people to start listening to their body, becoming more fluent in, in the language of movement, because I have this deep respect and understanding that, that no one can, can know has the capacity to, to understand and, and feel what's going on in your body better than you do. Um, that's, that's a, that's a fact. So science and great research and a very clinical approach to exercise and training. I'm all for it. There's, there's people who are into that, um, oh, yeah. and, and that can guide us by building a knowledge base. But at the end of the day, you're the one who inhabits your body. So you need to take some personal responsibility to get in there and create a dialogue, um, and start to understand what's happening in your body and how to relate, um, relate to your body, relate to the world via movement. I guess on that note, what are some of the steps you have people take to start to learn how to talk to themselves or feel themselves? Yeah. That's um, something that's lost in today's society, especially. You got so many people who are so wrapped up in everything else that they have to do. You know, it's hard to stop and reflect and look inward and start to have that dialogue. So, yeah, what are some of the steps that you have people do? Yeah, um, you're absolutely right, man. It's really hard for, uh, for, for us to slow down. Even when there's an awareness of the value there, it's still hard to slow down. So um, there's a few different things I do. From uh, just purely from a logistics standpoint, it's usually starting on the ground. Um, starting with these basic movements or that, that, that essentially mirror uh, human development. So we're babies, we start, you know, on the ground and we start navigating and building a base of movement from there. So I get people back down to the ground or as close to the ground as they're comfortable with to start with. And then we just start going through some basic movements um, that that just generally feel good. Um, they're, they're not overly taxing or challenging, but they give people a sense of like, oh, I'm feeling like, I'm, I'm feeling where my tight areas are. I'm feeling like, I'm feeling stuff. And I know that the, there's, there's generally an awareness that like, oh, this is great, I need this. Um, and from that, um, start to open up a dialogue. And this is where I approach training a little bit more like a therapist would, would approach uh, uh, therapy um, by looking at any work that I do with an individual as a collaboration. So it's the the meeting of two experts. You know, I'm I might be the expert on movement, but the, whoever I'm working with is an expert on their body, um, and so we're collaborating in that way instead of me telling someone to do this specific movement for this number of sets and reps. So I try to approach it more relationally. And um, uh, instead of talking so much and telling and, and giving so much direction, there is some of that for the sake of guidance and structure, but I also encourage people to be part of the process actively by asking them a lot of questions and creating, creating dialogue around what the movement feels like for them, um, what they're experiencing, what they're learning about their body. And then later on, we can start to look at, all right, like, where do you want to take your fitness? We can do, we can do anything. There's so many qualities to develop so many different ways that you can, um, you can, you can move and you can be fit and uh, to help people understand you're not confined to 
any this, that, or the other workout, but we can build this around what you personally need and what you, where your love is, what you, what really uh, inspires and, and energizes you. A lot of that tends to go back to people's experience either with play as they were kids or their experience in sports. And like, shit, that's great. Like, let's bring that into the experience. Let's build on that so you can build a, a, a movement practice, a, an approach to fitness that you love and that you can sustain for, um, for the long haul. Because I think so many people burn out when it's just like using discipline and willpower to completely fuel that process and eventually they 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 fall off you know yeah that's a lot to have to measure yeah i think uh that was one of the things she struggles with a lot is like you're saying discipline rigid rigidness of all scheduling all that stuff i mean for me it's not discipline. It's just something I love to do. So I'm fortunate in that regard, but I can see how most people probably don't want to put their body through what I put mine through. So, yeah, I mean, that, that approach. And I, I like the way you said, what was it? The, uh, the meeting of two was it meeting of two masters or meeting of two experts. Experts. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a great way of looking at it. And you know, I, I thank you for that as a coach myself. Because nobody's going to know that person like that person will. But you bring your side of it together. That's, uh, that's a great way of looking at it. I think that developing people is um, a big part of that is, is helping them to, to uh, hone their intuition. So if, it's all, if we're always just being in that student role or being the recipient of the, our, our teacher's uh, uh, teachings and, and guidance, but we're not actually processing that information through our own filters and, and, and building our own intuition, then I, I would really question how, uh, how much growth and progress we're actually making. Um, so I think everyone needs guidance, everyone needs mentors and coaches, but I think the best mentorship and coaching comes from those individuals that help people, help support people in doing things in the way that's going to work best for them. And the only, the only way to find that out is by involving them in the process and encouraging them to, um, to sh sharpen their intuition through, through, through repetition, through practice, and processing or reflection. I think that's so important on so many levels. Um, learning in general, I think that as a society, yeah, we get really, step. yeah, we really, we really get complacent, right? Um, and like the idea of doing the same thing over and over because, you know, somebody else has taught you to do it and that you, you can't, I, I would definitely argue personally that, you know, school doesn't necessarily teach you how to learn. They teach you how to do. Follow what, rules yeah. and yeah. Right. Here's what you have to do. Make everybody happy by making these grades, do this, and then you're, you're doing it right. Right. But I never, I, I can honestly say, I don't know that I really learned how to learn in school. That didn't come until after when I thought I saw some peers of mine um, basically experimenting. They were just really excited and cool with like, we're going to try this because I don't know the answer, uh, but I'm going to give it a go. And there's a part that with what you teach in a lot of ways that you're teaching it with movement, but obviously you're teaching it with mental. If you're learning through movement, I think you have to learn mentally and emotionally at the same time. You have to, you have to be able to connect those to really get line everything up um and i think it's really great that you do it both of you um teaching people how to learn because i think that's also part of our challenge with society and all of the current events that you know we spoke briefly about before this call i think if people understood how to learn because in order to learn you have to open your mind up you have to you have to get a little more creative. You have to realize that this box isn't the only thing there is. 
I can open the box, there's things outside of the box, like there might be better options than this box here. But until you get somebody to be willing to open their mind, um, it becomes very difficult for them on a lot of levels. And they become, they're very, it's a very fixed mindset, right? There's no growth mindset in it almost at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, yeah, there's just a lot of levels why I'm really excited that you help people learn in a lot of ways, you know? Yeah, I, 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 you bring up some great points there. And I think it, it as we're learning anything, it's very, um, it's a process. And when we're starting that process, it helps to be, it helps to have a box to some degree. Yeah. And that box should grow with you until you're ready to release it fully. And so like the structure of the box serves you for a time until it doesn't serve you. And, and then it after that, it becomes a hindrance. Mm -hmm. So I think the end goal, especially when it comes to learning is, is like, can, can, can these, these different pieces of information, these overlapping concepts and even seemingly um, contradictory or opposing concepts, can they exist within your whole framework and you, you're able to keep an eye on things and understand them? Um, but when you're beginning anything, it's just like, that's way too overwhelming. And I think that as, as humans, we, um, if, if life is chaotic, that we, we seek stability. We're constantly seeking that our that safety and stability of our basic needs and even our beliefs, we want them to be um, easy to understand and, and validated by others. But to open things up, what growth means to me is to start to open up the box until there is no box when all these different pieces can coexist and overlap and swirl and integrate um, and, 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 and you can make meaning of it. Uh, that's a tall order, but I mean, that's kind of why I feel like we're what, like what, what this is all about. Right? So totally it's like, agree. Yeah, that's life's yeah. process. That's yeah. the, the whole goal in life. <laughs> you want to ask them? Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up in a minute. Go ahead and I'll, I'll kind of. You enjoy it? Yeah. Okay. So a couple things. What are, what are some of your most important daily routines that you do, Kellen? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, the routine, as, as I talked about adaptability, um, the routine change I, I, throughout the year. Um, I live in a place that has four distinct seasons. So a lot of, you know, my, I find my routines fluctuate with the seasons. Um, but so right now, um, walking, morning walk and, a, and an evening walk, that is, that's really important to me and um and cooking as well um and i think those represent spaces in my routine for me to slow down as i said you know i'm like uh i have as hard a time as anyone else slowing down sometimes and especially when it's just me uh is going through these quarantine months and it's just like me at home working and um, editing videos and, and figuring out what to post. And it's just like the wheels start churning. It's easy to fall into that cycle, but I, I try to, um, some days successfully, other days not, but I try to, um, not fall into that, uh, or spiral into that to the point where it's fatiguing. Um, cause then I stop being, it stops being produ productive. Um, but going for a walk to just get some fresh air and, you know, see some colors and, um, and breathe. That's, that helps me reset and switch gears so I can do something else. Um, taking time to cook for myself. Um, I I've always loved cooking and that's another creative expression for me. And that's another chance to step away from my grind and to just to, to, to sink into flow. Um, to, to, to just be creating and, and in my zone and um, knowing that that's also aligning with part of my, my, my values and, and self-care um, by, by nourishing my body um, and fueling myself for my workouts and my training, which are uh, like year round, that's a part of my, uh, of, of my routines, moving and 
whatever, whatever way is, is appropriate on the given day. But um, aside from that, I would definitely say walking and cooking are two big pieces, um, music and, and just dancing it out. That's, yeah. that's, that's in there too. That's awesome. I love that. What, what, what's some of your favorite music? Oh, um, I like a lot of, I grew up on hip hop. I'm, I'm such a hip hop head. Yeah. Um, but you know, with the emergence of Spotify and these amazing yeah. algorithms that have yeah. constantly can funnel you good, good right. music, um, still very much hip hop, but a lot of indie music, um, alternative and, and electronic music. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love it. I'm, I'm similar. Yeah. Okay. So I want to, I, again, I wanted to be integral about your time. So we're going to wrap it up, but before we do, um, where, where should people find you? Where do you want people to search you out? I'm going to put your Instagram and all that, but just give us a shout out for what it all is and where they should find you ahead of time. Yeah, they can, they can check me out. Um, Movement Parallels Life on YouTube and on Instagram are the places that I, I hang out the most. If people are interested in uh, experiencing um, some of what I teach and some of these move, natural movement practices, then uh, I have a, a, a host of resources on my YouTube channel. And, um, and, and Instagram is a really good platform to just share ideas and, and to connect with people. I'm really enjoying that as a space to, um, to have conversations and answer questions and talk about this intersection between, um, between movement and life. I love it. 